Good evening. This is Matt Bautista and welcome once again to our Bible study in Faith Baptist Church, South Metro. And before we proceed with our study tonight, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for another opportunity that you have given to us that we may hear and learn from your word. May you give us wisdom and understanding. May you lead us and guide us and be with us, Lord, as we learn from your word tonight. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So tonight, we're going to talk about God's eternal life. This is lesson number seven in our series of God's essence. And honestly, um, as I was studying uh, our lessons, and uh, when I came to God's eternal life, I was actually kind of concerned because I asked the question, how are we going to emphasize God's eternal life in relation to His other attributes? And I remember I was able to deliver this message before uh, in the young people, as I have said in one of our previous studies, but I was not able to emphasize it the way I want to emphasize it now and teach it and share with you. So I was thinking, because how, how are we going to do it? Because everything that we attach to God's eternal life makes it eternal. His power, His sovereignty, His love, like everything becomes eternal. But how can you complement eternal? And that's somehow my struggle. But I really believe that um, each of God's attributes has its own unique characteristics and that um, even the inherent qualities of God are just as important and as marvelous, as magnificent as the rest of God's other attributes, uh, even as compared to His um, active functions, as we may say, as we have um, described in our chart, uh, the integrity of God. But uh, So I believe that, and God is good, and that um, He was able to give the insight necessary so that we may be able to learn His character complete, completely, uh, the way that we're supposed to understand it. So tonight, we're going to have our study. And our text is found in the book of Psalms, Psalm chapter 90, verses 1 to 17. But before we uh, read our text, we are going to have a bit of introduction. So Psalm chapter 90 is said to be the prayer of Moses, the man of God. It is also believed that it came about when Moses was interceding for the nth time for the Israelites when they rebelled against God after they went to spy out the land of Canaan and returned to be very discouraged and depressed. Now you can find that in the book of Numbers chapter 14. As Moses appealed to the character of God, he emphasized the eternal nature and of the Lord as compared to man's limited days. So he was appealing to God, but when he was appealing to the Lord, somehow he emphasized God's eternal nature to make his appeal. And we're going to read our text, but I, again, I'm going to read from another translation so that um, it would be easier for us to understand. If you want to use King James, by all means, that's perfectly fine. So Psalm 90, 1 to 17. This is again, as um, he said, Moses speaking. Lord, you have been our dwelling place, our refuge, our sanctuary, our stability in all generations. Before the mountains were born, or before you had given birth to the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are the eternal God. You turn man back to dust and say, Return to the earth, O children of mortal men, for a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, or as a watch in the night. You have swept them away like a flood. They fall asleep, forgotten as soon as they are gone. In the morning they are like grass which grows anew. In the morning it flourishes and springs up. In the evening it wilts and withers away. For we have been consumed by your anger, and by your wrath we have been terrified. You have placed our wickedness before you. Our secret sins, which we tried to conceal, you have placed in the revealing light of your presence. For all our days pass away in your wrath. We have finished our years like a whispered sigh. 
the days of our life are 70 years or even if because of strength 80 years now that explains um, the average of man's lifespan at this time yet their pride in additional years is only labor and sorrow for it is soon gone and we fly away who understands the power of your anger who connects this brevity of life among us with your judgment of sin and your wrath who connects it with their reverent fear that is due you so teach us to number our days that we may cultivate and bring to you a heart of wisdom turn O lord from your fierce anger how long will it be be compassionate toward your servants revoke your sentence O satisfy us with your loving kindness in the morning now before it grows older or before we grow older that we may rejoice and be glad all our days make us glad in proportion to the days you have afflicted us and the years we have suffered evil let your work the signs of your power be revealed to your servants and your glorious majesty to their children and let the gracious favor of the lord our god be on us confirm for us the work of our hands yes confirm the work of our hands now, this is a wonderful wonderful prayer of moses imagine um, as he was interceding again for the children of israel to god that um when they were actually um questioning uh, god's intentions because remember when the children of israel spied out the land of canaan and they returned they had um, an evil report and only joshua and caleb had a good report and were confident and when they were um giving their case and joshua and caleb uh said theirs they actually wanted to stone joshua and caleb for being faithful and trusting in god so this is a really difficult situation but again uh, we have seen uh, moses um, appeal to god's character so that uh, he may be able to intercede for the children of israel but continuing god is eternal life he always was always is and always will be there never was a time when god did not exist and moses understood this again god had neither a beginning nor does he have an end in psalm 91 and 2 we have seen that because god is eternal we have the assurance that he will always be there since his existence will never cease so will the rest of his attributes all that make up his divine essence so we're going to look at how god's eternal life or his eternal nature is emphasized and complemented by god's other attributes so let's see what we can learn tonight number one eternal life and sovereignty and letter a we can see that the eternality of god is absolute now we're going to use the word eternality now i know that this term is not really common but uh, as i was searching in the internet about this um, merriam webster online uh, actually defines this term and it means the um, state of being eternal so if uh, merriam webster accepts this term i guess it's good enough for me <laughs> to accept the term as well okay so uh, just me it may be unfamiliar to us but uh, this will work uh, to to describe what we're talking about so the eternality of god is absolute since he's sovereign it's absolute it's self-sustaining it's supreme it's above all in job 36 verse 26 it says there behold god is great and we know him not neither can the number of his years be searched out and isaiah 46 9 and 10 remember the former things of old for i am god and there is none else i am god and there is none like me declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done saying my counsel shall stand and i will do all my pleasure and in first timothy 1 17 this is a wonderful passage now unto the king eternal immortal invisible the only wise god be honor and glory forever and ever amen so what does it mean that god's um eternality is absolute well that's why he is alpha and omega the beginning and the end in revelation 21 verse 6a and he said unto me it is done i am alpha and omega the beginning and the end since his eternality or eternal nature is absolute he decides what's the beginning 
And what's the end? Because he is not bound by time, he is eternal. What he deems to be the start and the finish will be what the last, uh, the start and the finish uh, that uh, would actually be. So that's how um, his eternal, uh, his absolute eternal nature operates. And uh, as it relates to the prayer of Moses, well, God is, let her be from everlasting to everlasting, meaning he has no beginning and no end. He would be the one to determine the beginning and the end. He's the one to decide because he is eternal and his eternality is absolute. But then, what does it mean to us? What personal application can we make out of it? Well, the life we have in Christ will absolutely continue for eternity without interruption. Since God's eternality is absolute, the eternal life that He has bestowed upon us the moment we believe in Jesus Christ will not be interrupted. Imagine if it suddenly be, um, becomes, <laughs> if, it, if something suddenly interrupts the eternal life that we have in God, that would be problematic. So since God's eternality is absolute, we can be sure that the eternality, the eternal life that He shares with us will be the same. And number two, eternal life and righteousness. What can we learn here? Letter A. God's eternality is perfect. Since His righteousness is perfect righteousness, His eternality is perfect. Therefore, salvation is perfect. The salvation that, that He has given us, the eternal life that He has given us is perfect. Isaiah 45 verse 17. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. He shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. So we will not be ashamed of the salvation that we have. Why? Because it is everlasting and it is perfect. And in uh, Hebrews 5 verse 9, and being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation. So that's the author, that's the, um, the basis of our eternal life. Jesus Christ who is perfect, God, who has perfect eternal life, the author of our eternal salvation, and to all them that obey Him. So, God's eternality is perfect. It is flawless. It doesn't have any um, defects where uh, it could suddenly uh, bug down or suddenly uh, be, be disrupted. Like, again, we have said earlier, so God's eternality is perfect. And how does it relate to the prayer of Moses and their people at the time? Letter B, the Lord flawlessly passes time. He is not bound by it. In Psalm 90 verse 4, let's read it. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, or as a watch in the night. So God, because He's not bound by time and His eternality is perfect, everything just passes by for him. He is not concerned and he is not disrupted or interrupted by time. So, what does it mean to us? What personal application can we make? Well, God's timetable flows perfectly. If God's timetable flows perfectly, so does his plans for you and for me. It's always on time, on schedule, because his timetable is perfect. And Number three, eternal life and justice. Letter A, upright is God's eternal nature. What does it mean? Upright, it is honest, it is, it is um, fair, God's eternal nature. Um, Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 40, For I lift up my hand to heaven and say, I live forever. God can fully declare it because it is right and it is fair for the one true god to live forever again if god did not live forever well then he doesn't um qualify to be god and that's why god is the one true god because he lives forever and it's just right for god for the one true god that he lives forever because if not then how can he be the god that he claims to be so that's why his eternal life or eternality is upright, his eternal nature. And it is worthy. It is worthy to abide forever. His eternality is worthy to, ab to abide forever. In Psalm 102, 
verse 12, But thou, O Lord, shall endure forever, and thy remembrance unto all generations. He is worthy to endure forever. His name, His remembrance, His entire being. And letter B, uh, how does it relate to the prayer of Moses? Well, it is fair that man's time is but a, fa but a vapor compared to God's eternality. It's only fair because we might think, well, if God is eternal, why didn't he make eternal beings? Well, um, if we remember um, during the time in the Garden of Eden, man was supposedly created to be perfect and um, eternal, uh, immortal. But then because of sin, we started decaying. So it's only fair that man's time is but a vapor compared to God's eternality. Because he deserves that, and we don't. And in Psalm chapter 90, verse 10, let's read that. The days of our life are 70 years, or even, if because of strength, 80 years. Yet their pride in additional years is only labor and sorrow, for it is soon gone and we fly away. So we really can consider actually the added years past 80 to be a blessing from the Lord. So we, if we know someone who's past 80, or if we ourselves, if there's someone watching who's past 80, we thank the Lord for the time that He has given us. And um, what application can we make from this principle? We have a lawfully granted hope of, eternal, of eternity in Christ despite our short-lived life on earth. Even though we lived, we, we um, would live um, just um, a few years, several years in, on this earth as compared to God, He has given us a lawfully granted eternal life. Since He deserved it, He can share it with us. And number four, eternal life and love. What can we find out? What can we learn about this? Now, this actually also gave me uh, a little trouble in really contemplating and searching God's word. Letter A, God's eternal nature is generous. It overflows. It's not like his eternality is um, uh, motivating God to give. No, it doesn't mean that. But the eternality of God, its entirety, his eternal nature is plenty. So it's, it's, um, it doesn't run out. The supply of his eternality, if we can say that, never runs out. It overflows. It's generous. So in John 3.16, a familiar passage, but let's read it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. What does it mean? He cannot share eternal life with us if it is just enough for him. Imagine, because if God's eternal life is enough just to sustain him for eternity, if he were to share it with us, then there's the possi possibility of it getting lost or diminishing, decreasing, so he won't be eternal anymore. But since God's eternal nature overflows, it gives him the capacity to share it with others. That's why we can have eternal life. And how does it relate to the prayer of Moses, letter B? He can extend our time to show mercy because he has time to give. He has time to give. A personal application? Well, we will not run out of eternal life with God. We can be sure of that. Now, these may appear to be simple truths so far, the ones that we have seen from 1 to 4, but they tell why God is able to do all the marvelous things that he does or be marvelous as a God. That's why you may think, well, those are simple truths, principles, yes, that they, they work, they're, they're simple, they're not really too deep. I understand that that's true, but this, these truths explain how God is marvelous and how he, how he is able to do all the marvelous things that he does because of these attributes and how they work together to perform all of the great works that he does and to, become, uh, and to become the great God that he is. These attributes that make up his divine essence. Okay, so moving on, number five, eternal life and omnipotence. What can we learn from this letter A? God's eternal life is sustained by His power. God's eternal life is sustained by His power. 
Revelation 11 verse 17, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and wast and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned. It's like God is, God's eternality or his eternal nature is fully charged all the time because he is omnipotent. And letter B, what does it mean? Uh, how, did, how did it relate to Moses' prayer? Well, God is sustained from everlasting to everlasting in Psalm 90 verse 2. That's why he can be from everlasting to everlasting because he, his eternality is fully charged all the time. So, what practical application can we make or personal application? Well, our Heavenly Father will not suddenly disappear. Imagine. Imagine if His eternality suddenly runs out. Again, it's one thing that His eternality is plenty enough. It's vast enough. But it's another thing for it to be powered. Because I believe that God's, God's um, essence is also powered by His omnipotence. And every uh, attribute of God is powered by His omnipotence. It's enabled by His omnipotence. As we have seen, it's one of the inherent um, qualities in God's attributes. So our Heavenly Father will not suddenly disappear. We can trust it because He will not suddenly lose, out of, he will not suddenly lose power and uh, His eternality won't go low bad. Okay? And number six, eternal life and omniscience. How do they relate? Letter A, God's timing in all eternity or throughout eternity is precise. In Ecclesiastes um, chapter 3, verse 11, I'll be reading from a different translation so that um, we would be able to understand it fully. Ecclesiastes 3, 11, He has made everything beautiful and appropriate in, in its time. He has also planted eternity, a sense of divine purpose in the human heart, a mysterious longing which nothing under the sun can satisfy except God. Yet man cannot find out, comprehend, or grasp what God has done, his overall plan, from the beginning to the end. Now, again, because in the King James, it says uh, um, he has set the world uh, in his heart, in man's heart. So the world actually refers to eternity. That's what it means. That's what um, the world means in the King James in another translation. Just so that we understand properly. And in Ephesians uh, chapter 1, verses 3 and 4, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. He hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, and he has given us all of these blessings way back in eternity past. So God's timing in all eternity is pre precise. Because he knows the right timing and he has lived in eternity. He is living in eternity. That's why he knows the perfect timing. And um, as in the prayer of Moses, letter B, the timing for every life is according to his schedule, not ours. In Psalm chapter 90, verse 12, So teach us to number our days that we may cultivate and bring to you a heart of wisdom. It is God who decides our time on earth, and His timing is perfect. He knows from eternity. Again, because it's one thing that He knows everything, but what if He is not eternal? Let's think about it. What if He is not eternal? Then there is no way for Him to know everything from any time. But since He is eternal, he, His timing can be perfect. He can know because He is eternal and omniscient. And a personal application, well, a short life can be a full life if spent with the one who gives fullness of life. I'm going to try to say that again. I was kind of uh, a little poetic there. and just That's just me. It, I may not be. But a short life can be a full life if spent with the one who gives fullness of life because he knows our time on earth. And number seven, eternal life and omnipresence. Letter A, God is eternal everywhere. Now that's, again, there's more meaning to 
it than that. Well, let's read Deuteronomy chapter 33, verses 26 to 27. What does it say? Let me turn my page. Okay. There is none like unto the, uh, unto the God of Jeshurun, who rideth upon the heaven in thy help, and in his excellency on the sky. The eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms, and he shall thrust out the enemy from before thee, and shall say, Destroy them. So God is in heaven, but also beneath on earth are his everlasting arms. And that means that his everlasting arms, wherever we are in the world, will remain everlasting, the eternal God. So, this actually means that the Lord is not just eternal in heaven. Because we may get it, uh, to think that, well, God is eternal only in heaven because his, let's say his charger is there. No, uh, because his, uh, he's this divine being that he can only... Man manifest all of his attributes when he's in his dwelling place. No, wherever he is, God is eternal. Wherever or whenever, wherever we are, we can be reached by his everlasting arms for all eternity. No matter where, even in the vast universe, there's nowhere we can hide from the everlasting arms of God. It will be there to support us. And how did this relate in the prayer of Moses, Psalm 90, verse uh, 1. Lord, you have been our dwelling place, our refuge, our sanctuary, our stability in all generations. God is our dwelling place forever. Wherever he is, that's where eternity is. Actually, our eternity is in God, in Jesus Christ, when we believed in him. And number eight, oh, well, um, a personal application that we can make in this principle, we can find refuge in God all the time, anytime and anywhere, in all generations. We can go to Him, no matter where we are, anytime. And number eight, eternal life and immutability. Eternal life and immutability. Letter A, the eternality of God will never change. It will never change. In Psalm 102, verses 26 to 27, they shall perish, but thou shalt endure. Yea, all of them shall wax old like a garment. As a vesture shalt thou change them, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall have no end. Isaiah 40, 40 verse 28. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary, there is no searching of his understanding. The eternity of God will never change. Letter B, how did it relate to Moses' prayer in Psalm 90, verse 2? Well, the Lord will remain the eternal God. Let's read it again. Before the mountains were born, or before, the, before you had given birth to the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are the eternal God. So, a personal application for us, forever God is faithful. And he, if He is faithful forever, that means that we can count on Him any time. And even our children, our children's children can count on Him. He will be faithful forever to them because it will not change. Okay? And lastly, number nine, eternal life and veracity eternal life and veracity what can we learn here letter a god's eternal nature is true now that's something that we need to establish because we may talk about all of these things these wonderful things but if it's not true then it's all for nothing well who verified the truth the truthfulness of god's eternal nature well let's go to john chapter 8 verse 58 jesus himself speaking jesus said unto them Verily, verily, truly, truly, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. And we know that um, at this time when Jesus spoke this to the people, some of the people wanted to stone him because of that remark, because he was telling them that he was equal to God, that he is God, and we know that he is. And when he said this, before Abraham was, I am, 
And some of the people actually re reacted and said, well, you're not even 50 years old. How can you be alive when Abraham was there? But again, because he is eternal. And the people that time did not understand it. But Jesus himself gave testimony to this truth. We can trust it. His eternal life, his eternity, his eternality, rather, is true. And in our text, in the prayer of Moses, letter B, the psalmist Moses himself believed God was truly eternal because he declared it. He was convinced. In Psalm 91 and 2, let's just read it again one more time. Lord, you have been our dwelling place, our refuge, our sanctuary, our stability in all generations. Before the mountains were born or before you had given birth to the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are the eternal God. And what's our personal application from this principle? Eternity with God, our eternal life for uh, our eternal life with Him, is real. It's no joke. It's it's not um, it's not a ruse. When the Bible said that we can have eternal life with Jesus Christ, that's for sure. And if we believe in Him, we're sure that we will spend the rest of our lives for all eternity in heaven with God. And to conclude, everything that God is has always been and will always be in our lives. We can always count on the immortal God that will never leave us nor forsake us. There will never be a time that He will not be there when we call on Him. We can just call on God's name and He'll be there. He will listen. Shall we pray? Our Father in heaven, thank you for who you are. Thank you for being our eternal God. Despite being the marvelous eternal God that you are, you are also a personal God to us. And we thank you because you are willing to share eternity with us. Despite being imperfect, you have given us the opportunity to spend eternity with you. Thank you, Lord. And I pray that you would continue to guide and lead each one as we live um, through our difficult um, situation at this time and we trust that you will be with us along the way thank you for your grace and your faithfulness to us and all of this we pray in jesus name amen thank you very much for your time and we hope that you can join us again next time as we learn from god's word